Hello, I'm Rob Martinez. This is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. By 1850, New Mexico was moving out of and away from centuries of being part of Spain's world empire and then being part of Mexico. This radical shift away from Spanish and Mexican rule and into U.S. territorial rule was radical and had reverberation through every aspect of New Mexican culture and politics. That included religion. Let's remember, the Pueblo people had their own religious and spiritual practices for centuries before the Spanish ever arrived in the 1500s. When the Spanish arrive, they bring Spanish Roman Catholicism. This form of Catholicism was the state religion of Spain's empire. True, there was also Jewish and Muslim elements in the culture and uh, religious expressions of Spain, but nonetheless, after 1492, Roman Catholicism is the state religion. To be anything else was illegal. That's why there was an inquisition throughout the Spanish realms. So, by 1850, New Mexico has to adjust to other religious views coming from back east. Well, one of the things that changes, even within that Catholic system, is that New Mexico is made a diocese, Santa Fe, and a bishop is finally appointed to New Mexico, the Bishop of Santa Fe. The first bishop was Jean-Baptiste Lamy, a Frenchman. There's a lot of speculation as to why the Catholic Church appointed a Frenchman. Maybe they thought, well, French is a Romance language. It should be easy for a Frenchman to rule over the New Mexicans who have Spanish language and Spanish and Mexican Catholic practices, but it was a strange choice, and soon it would be very controversial. Lamy was from France. Uh, he uh, made his way uh, to the United States, and he eventually is a priest at Cincinnati, Ohio. Ultimately, when he's appointed the Bishop of Santa Fe, and he makes his way along the Santa Fe Trail, and when he gets to Santa Fe, um, he has a bit of a surprise. Uh, no one uh, here uh, recognizes him as the bishop, and they're told that they uh, don't have any official word from Durango in Mexico that he would be arriving or that he would be uh, the bishop. So he ends up having to travel, as if you can imagine, all the way down to Durango to give official word that he is the new bishop in Santa Fe. So this delays his taking over uh, by a few months, but nonetheless, he comes back and he is the bishop of Santa Fe, Bishop Lamy. Well, almost immediately, he looks down on the local population and their religious expression. We need to understand that Roman Catholicism is not monolithic, or not as monolithic as we think it is. Um, we tend to think that there's uh, only one kind of Catholicism. There are actually something like 12 to 14 different rites in Catholicism. The, the largest one or the biggest one is the Latin rite. But there are different uh, official uh, religious expressions within the Catholic Church. And then uh, local populations and local cultures tend to shape and mold uh, that religious expression even more. New Mexico over the centuries had developed and evolved a Roman Catholicism that was folk Catholicism. Yes, there were Franciscans coming here in the 1700s and into the early 1800s and then diocesan priests, but ultimately, uh, at first, they come into contact and clash with Pueblo religious expressions, then Genisaro Indian religious expressions, and then, of course, the local uh, Hispano, Nuevo Mexicano uh, religious expressions start to take on a look and a 
flavor all their own as the late Jesuit priest Father Thomas Steele described it. He called it un misticismo tosco, a rough-edged spiritualism in New Mexico that was a uh, prayer and ritual that brought the people, the local gente of New Mexico, into an intimate relationship with God. It also um, brought them close to what were considered other family members, the, the Virgin Mary, other saints, and angels. In other words, it was folk religion, and you see expressions of this religion start to develop and evolve in the late 1700s, the early 1800s, our Santero tradition, the carving of saints, our penitentes. Uh, it all creates a form of folk Catholicism that to someone like uh, Bishop Lamy was quite exotic, foreign, and almost not Christian. Uh, as you can imagine, this starts to create a situation where he seems to think that the New Mexicans need to be Christianized and our Catholicism brought into line with modern Catholicism of 1850. Well, by 1850, one of the most powerful religious leaders in New Mexico was Padre Martinez of Taos. Father Martinez of Taos, he was from Abiquiu, born in the 1790s, the son of Antonio Severino Martin and Maria del Carmen Santisteban. He was a Nuevo Mexicano. He was of Spanish and Native American ancestry. When he went to study in Durango to be a priest, he studied under the Jesuits who were quite uh, enlightened and even radical. Um, Father Martinez embraced Mexican nationalism and saw his role as a priest to protect the poor in New Mexico and to promote education as a form of freedom for his people. He trained uh, many local men to be priests, uh, men with names like Ortiz and Gallegos. And by the time Lamy gets here, they are, for the most part, the local leaders of the Catholic Church. Well, almost immediately, he comes into conflict with these local priests who he considers to be less than him and lacking in formation and in how they are catechizing or not catechizing the Pueblo people, um, the Genisaro population, and the Nuevo Mexicanos. So, this sets up um, a battle, a spiritual battle, a battle for the souls of New Mexico's Catholic population. One of the first tools uh, Lamy uses is bringing outside priests, bringing priests from France. That's why if you look at the Catholic Church records for the 1870s and 1880s um, in places like Mora, uh, Santa Cruz, you'll see uh, French names like Forchegu assigning uh, marriage uh, entries and baptismal entries. So this is what's starting to happen. He really wants to change New Mexico. Um, he uh, tries to change our church architecture because he finds it uh, less than appealing, even ugly. That's why if you go around to some of the churches in New Mexico, like uh, San Felipe Neri in Albuquerque's Old Town or uh, San Jose de Gracia in Las Trampas, you'll see these old New Mexico adobe fortress churches with these little wooden uh, spires on top. This was uh, Lemmy's attempt to uh, Frenchify and Europeanize our church architecture. Well, it's not just the church architecture he wants to change. It's also the Catholic people of New Mexico. And we'll see in another episode what happens when Padre Martinez and the bishop, Lemmy, go at it for New Mexico's Catholic soul. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hasta luego.